Yo, this is Stacks and Bars, the stock market hip hop podcast, the only place you will find finance mixed with hip hop. And today, yo, I got the best financial coach with me on the podcast. We got Erica Young, and we're going to talk about all about how to get your finances in order, what's happening in the workplace, and more. Let's go. I got my click ready to use the money they got from jobs and courage and teaching them that it's not so hard. I'm doing this, making investing pop. You law is extra. You tuning in to Stocks and Bars. Yo, Stocks and Bars, what's going on? So, you know, when we have somebody on here, we have to do a special introduction. So check this out. Family, when I tell you it's been a while, it's been a while. So, the, the young lady I have with me today, we met at FinCon. If you notice, there's been a lot of things going on with me and FinCon and the established relationships we made. So, we met, me and my wife, we met this young lady and her husband when we were sitting down eating. We were chilling, they sat down next to us and we were talking about our kids and then we ended up having a conversation about children and all of that. And then next thing you know, we come to find out we're both there for FinCon. So we continue to have conversations and family, when I tell you energy is real, energy is real. We <laughs> continue to bump into each other no matter where we were at, <laughs> at FinCon. And even when we were not at FinCon, we would still bump into each other. So the energy was just leading us to each other to say, yo, y'all have to eventually end up doing some type of work together. So the last time I seen her, I, I finally got that. I was like, yo, we really got to connect. She was like, all right. So boom, we said it there. Fast forward to now. That connection took a minute. However, we made it happen. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome to the podcast, Erica Young. She is a phenomenal woman changing the world and when i say the world i mean it all right so thank you for coming on to the show and spending your time with me welcome to the show thanks so <laughs> much for having me that was an awesome yeah introduction and honestly we were we kept bumping into each other i think that's so funny how yeah. all of that happens and then when life gets in the way and we get back home doing our thing like it's right. hard to connect so we are making it happen and i'm really happy to be here yeah, family, I'm dead serious. We seriously bumped into each other every time. <laughs> everywhere, yeah, it's, everywhere. It's all love. Yeah, so how's Chris doing? He's doing well. He's doing well, yes. And we have been pretty busy um, getting our podcast off the ground as well. Okay. Uh, we have been doing some travel. We've got... A young person in college and yeah, it's just, it's been an interesting journey this last year. So I will say, but yeah, we're, we're having a good time. That's good. That's good. So for the people who do not know who Erica Young is, let's go ahead and just give a quick breakdown on who you are and how you got to where you are at right now. Wow. Well, let's see how quickly I can do that. Cause that's not really a <laughs> quick story. I, I will tell you that, but um, I have been a financial coach for 18 years, and that's why I say it's been, you know, it, it is a journey. Uh, yes. My husband and I, we climbed our way out of $90,000 in debt, and I really wanted to help other people do the same thing. And so I found a passion for, honestly, budgeting, spreadsheets, cash flow planning. Um, that's what got you and, there. <laughs> helping people find their debt-free date. That is what is exciting to me. And then also breaking down any barriers that they're having to winning with their money. And today I have shifted in the, in a, the last year or two, I have taken that knowledge and experience to develop financial wellness programs for the workplace as an employee benefit, as well as training other coaches. And so I am hopeful that this one-on-one -on -one model that I have created can become a one-to-many model. And I am actively, you know, doing that right now, getting my first couple of contracts and really excited about that. Changing the world, just like I said. There Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> this is reality. When I say change the world, family, I mean... The world is everything that encompasses you. And you have to understand to change the world, just have to change what's around you. All right. We, we can we can get broad and say the world is a bigger place. We could, but 
starts with you and yeah. you taking that initiative. So you mentioned that you are doing things in the workplace. I do have a question concerning that. You know, as we continue to have this potential recession on the horizon here, you know, what are you seeing right now that is happening with people working in the workforce on their approach to how they are using their money? Yeah, that's it's big. People are afraid of losing their jobs. Let's just be honest and cut to the chase. You know, the inflation rate has been on the rise and it's at an unhealthy level. <laughs> um, it's, it's hard to keep up with that. And that's the honest truth. But it, we've been there for a solid year, I would say. And people are concerned about losing their jobs. And so in practical terms, in personal finance, that means that everybody should be much more concerned about having right. a decent emergency fund. Right. And and I have been teaching and I still believe this to be a good strategy. I've been teaching people to look at their budget, look at their spending, make sure that they're paying attention to the details because if inflation is eight and a half percent, then we need to be making adjustments at eight and a half percent. Right. Right. I would love for someone to be increasing their savings by eight and a half percent because you just don't know what tomorrow brings. I mean, people were sidelined when um, the banks closed their doors um, <laughs> <Right>. and recently <laughs> Bed Bath & Beyond just completely you know, it's gone. Uh, yeah. And so I think we have to be wise and we have to make sure that we've got enough in savings to weather a storm should have come our way. But I think people are really nervous and um, they're concerned about their jobs first and foremost. And I think that that is a fair thing to be watchful of um, yeah. and and making sure that people have a solid handle on their expenses and things of that nature. If If you are in a stuck position, I think that, that that this is really the time to wake up because I've been there oh, yeah. um, years ago there, you know, frankly, and, you know, 20, let's see, 2000, 1999 to 2000 when things <laughs> were kind of crazy back then. Um, and then again in 2008 and 2009. You know, the biggest thing is you can breathe, you can sleep at night, you can de-stress if you've got a little bit money saved. And so that's that's my first piece of advice that I would say. So when it comes to saving money, the question that always that people tend to have when it comes to saving money is how much. And unfortunately, in this high infl inflation that we're in right now, people are choosing taking their money versus saving their money because they have to be able to make ends meet. You know, yeah. they got to be able to still get groceries, pay the bills and all that. So one of the first things that get cuts out of people budget that doesn't exist <laughs> mm -hmm. is savings. They automatically like, I'll save later, but I want to tell everybody personally, you won't, mm -hmm. you simply won't because you're not making a priority out of it. And the minute you start making a priority out of it is when it will actually start to increase. Yeah. Like my story with savings is I started with $20. That's how it started. I just said one day I'm all right, I got to do it. And I set up an account and I just had it auto drafted. So I didn't even see it. And then next thing you know, when I looked at that balance, I'm like, Oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I got a little something here, you know, and I was like, you know what, change that to 25. And That's then that right. just continued to, to grow from there. So what type of advice do you have for anybody who is running into these hurdles? Mm -hmm. Like, how can they start to actually put away money yeah. for themselves? Yeah, I think the biggest, the very first thing you mentioned already is to make it automatic, right? And And so if it's automatic, then it's one less thing to think about. And my right. preference is that you payroll deduct it and not just have it transferred from your checking to your savings, but have it mm, payroll deducted to a right completely there. different bank. That would be lovely. But there are lots of tools out there now that make savings easy. Like when you spend, you, you can save a percentage. There is So you can make this easy where you don't have to think about it in that way. You can set it up um, on the front side. But I also think that we have to draw a line in the sand. I think a lot of people don't want to change habits. Mm. And this is why they say they can't save. <laughs> mm -hmm. The three budget busters, in my opinion, that are keeping people from saving money. I'm going to leave the top dog for last. But the first one is dining out. Mm. 
we have to eat, <laughs> but do we have to dine out? We have uh -huh. to ask ourselves these questions, right? And so I'm not saying bring it all the way down to zero, but if you look at a previous month and you have spent $400 on dining out, odds are you can easily cut that in half and not feel deprived, right? right, right. So so dining out is one. The second one is our subscriptions and how many subscriptions. I actually had one family <laughs> that I was crazy. working with. Yes, <laughs> listen, I'm I'm calling it on the carpet. I had one family that added up all their subscriptions and that in and of itself was over $150 and they had two children, one of which was an infant. So you can't tell me that this family of four and the infant is not really watching tv right, right. They ain't consuming right <laughs> exactly right <laughs> that that they're using all of these subscriptions and i'm not talking about one was 70 dollars. i'm talking about ten dollars fifteen dollars eleven dollars nine dollars adds up yep. adding it all up and and so we did an audit and they were able to cut that in half they were able to bring it down to like 70 dollars. and so you think about how much you're spending that you don't even realize you're still paying for right. and it's no longer relevant, right? So subscriptions can get you easily. And then the biggest and our favorite one to hate, honestly, is Amazon. <laughs> Just Amazon <laughs> off my <laughs> Literally looking at, and, and this is the thing people don't realize that they can look at their Amazon spending. They actually total it up, go online, check out your spending. I know that this is a, a big pill to swallow, but I think that a lot of times we're choosing the convenience and we're not realizing that we're adding extras to the cart. We are getting things that we don't necessarily need simply because it's easy and it's coming tomorrow. And so- right. And and I'm not saying don't do it, but I am saying, think about, do you need it this week? Can you plan for these purchases on the next paycheck, on the next, bu next budget cycle, that kind of thing? Um, and I think it's fair and it's totally fine to have an Amazon category on the budget that is reasonable with things right. that you know you're going to buy. But I think that we tend to get out of hand and we love the convenience that we don't have to go to store and we're getting these extra things. And it's like, do you really need that? So <laughs> yeah, that's usually a big one, a biggie one it, because we want it fast and it it can, it can cloud our vision on yes. what the real priority yes. and need is for sure. <laughs> it's that instant gratification. Once again, biting us in the rear end. Yep. Everyone has gotten accustomed to yep. getting something as soon as possible. Like that's right. Again, do you need it? <laughs> Your <laughs> real story. I ended. I got Amazon Prime. I usually get it like maybe twice a year because they give it to me for free to try to get me to get it. But yeah. <laughs> I got y'all. I don't do it. <laughs> Every time they do it, I always say, "Yeah, sure." And then immediately I go in. Cancel that, please, so that way I only have it for 30 <laughs> days. Here's a trick. If I if y'all don't know the game, yep. I just shared it with you. But that's yep. how I get it. So they gave it to me, and I tested one thing on there where it said you can have it overnight. I said, y'all tripping overnight? <laughs> you need it overnight? Right. So what did I do? I pressed the button. I'm like, bet. Let me see if it comes here overnight. Five in the morning, somebody came to my door and delivered it. I said, yeah, wow. really mm -hmm. want it. <laughs> yeah, they have made this super easy to say yes to, right? Yeah, and, I, and I was impressed. I'm like, there's really somebody up right now delivering packages yep. for Amazon at five yep. in the morning. All right. <laughs> I didn't yep. need it, but I wanted to see what was going to happen. And we I thought get I was going to get addicted to that convenience life. Yeah, I, I seriously thought I was going to get an email and saying, yeah, it'll be here by like 10 or something. That's what I was expecting. Not five in the morning with my dog barking like, yo. Somebody... <laughs> like, yeah. Then I check my phone. I got somebody at my door. I'm like, oh, it's yep. real. <laughs> <laughs> they, meant what, they meant it when they said that. Yeah. <laughs> Overnight, <laughs> like it will be here tomorrow. That's right. <laughs> All right. So you and Chris have tackled down into the podcast arena. But before I get there, you know, you two, you two are awesome, by the way, right? <laughs> 
it was it was a blessing to be able to be able to share a space with somebody who was further ahead in life that had children. We were able to have those conversations, you know, you were able to reminisce and look at what you had before. And then we were able to look forward to see, okay, what we're going to end up having to run into. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So question I have for you is when it comes to finances, you know, one of the big things that break up marriages is finance, you know, and you two have made it so far. So is there anything that you could share on how the two of you handle finances that have helped you grow together? That's a really good question. So yeah, we've been together two and a half decades. <laughs> no, <laughs> That's a long that's, 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 time. Yeah, this is what I'm talking it's a about long right time. <laughs> and we spent the first five years getting out of debt. So we prioritized that above anything else. And what that did was it freed up cash so that we can make other decisions that honestly were easier, right? So it's su super easy to say yes to a vacation when yeah. you don't have debt following you, or it's easier to say yes to investing or saving when you don't have that competing priority. Um, and for us at that time, years ago, clearly 20 years ago, we had um, $1,000 plus in debt payments. Actually, I think it was $1,200 in debt payments, $1,000 um, as a mortgage, right? And then we yeah. had childcare for two kids. And so all of those things were similar dollars out. It was disgusting, actually. And so <laughs> to get rid of the debt and to be on the same page there was huge. Um, so I, I just, I would say my biggest advice is to move debt out of the way because it makes all other decisions a little bit easier. Right. Um, and communicate even on the small levels. Right. So it, I, I don't think that you can actually talk too much about money and sharing your heart, your dreams, but also your past, your upbringing and how you feel about your credit score or why do you tip, you know, that much? Like, I just think that every conversation is a value add and understanding yeah. your partner and knowing how to relate to them well. And then not judging yourself or judging them on their answers, really just receiving them how they are. And so just stay curious, stay curious and give them, you know, room to be themselves and, and inquire. But I think a lot of the times people think that getting on the same page, these, you mm -hmm. know, this whole idea of what it means to get on the same page, that that's the answer. And really the only way you're really going to be in the same book on the same page is if you're communicating. Right. Um, right, right. And, and Chris and I don't see eye to eye on every single thing. So there are things where, subjects on money, on the topic of money, in which we are in different chapters of the same book, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> or or we are in a same genre, right? And, and we could talk the same language, but we, again, we don't see eye to eye. And so I think that, I think you need to understand that that will also happen. Like we enjoy talking about money. We enjoy you know, we're doing well on our journey. We've been out of debt for many years. And um, if we were to step away from working, we'd be just fine today. Yeah. However, that doesn't mean that everything has been a cakewalk in our life. Right. <laughs> and so I think, and it doesn't mean that we agreed on everything. And it doesn't mean that we process, we definitely still process differently. Even just this weekend, he was, talking through the way that he was processing we're doing a renovation project at the house and so he was processing a certain way and I was like oh I get it you are thinking about the end and going back and I'm thinking about these smaller details mm -hmm. and because I understand how he's thinking about it I let him have that instead of explaining the way that I'm thinking about it because that's unnecessary. Uh -huh. Right. And so I'm like, got it. Now that I understand. Perfect. You do that. You do you boo. And then now, <laughs> and as long as we agree on the overall big picture, great. I'm happy with that. So um, we still don't process the same. So I just think that 
um, getting out of debt is huge. And then just continue to communicate so you can understand one another better. Yeah. So the get out of debt part, right? We, we talked about the whole thing about savings and the, the, the hurdles that people mentally run into thinking that they aren't capable of doing it because they have to spend it on this. They have to do this. And like you said, you really have to do an audit and figure out, do you really need that? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. Is that true? Um, so what I wanted to get to was, I lost my train of thought here as I was kind of, <laughs> so I got on that one. <laughs> um, you were talking about your husband and, you know, getting on the same page about everything. So when it comes to that, you know, how did you and your husband have that first conversation to say, okay, this is where I'm at right now. This is where I want to get to. How do you and I get there? How'd that conversation first start? Honestly, we were forced into it in premarital counsel before I had a ring oh, on my okay. finger. <laughs> so I am a big fan of counseling. Um, and we disagreed about where if we were going to get married where we live, meaning two different states. Like okay. we just didn't think I thought one thing, he thought another. And in the end, sure, we resolved that. Um, and we ended up in the state that I thought we were going to end up in. <laughs> so first of all, he learned that the wife is always right. <laughs> but second of all, in that counseling, one of the biggest things that our counselor did is he he told us to bring our credit reports to the table and he mm. gave mine to Chris and Chris's to, to, to me. And I was... Lord, I was like, I just, I have never shared my credit report with anyone. And, and I was young, but I also yeah. was clear that I wasn't on time with all my credit cards, that I had a whole bunch of student loans. And, you yeah. know, I just was like, what is this going to be? And that was, we were thrust upon talking about getting out of debt and why this was important or, you know, honestly understanding if we wanted this to be something we were aggressive about, right? Yeah. So you can look at the credit report and say, oh, well, I'm fine with it. You know, $45,000 in student loan debt, no problem. <laughs> you know, but I was, you know, when I look back and I say, wow, in the first five years of our relationship, we paid off $90,000 in debt. I mean, 90000 repulsed me looking back on it. I, I would never have wanted to stay in that place longer than that. Right. And even I wish that it was a little bit sooner. And so- um, we didn't know how to start that conversation. Someone else started it for us. So there's that. But also I think that because of that conversation where we had to really understand what we wanted, we started dreaming about the other stuff we wanted. You know, right, we started right. thinking about, you know, we, I want to travel or I would love to have a boat or, you know, I want to be able to send my kids to college for free. Like we were, we would, we started talking about, okay, so when the debt is out the way, then what? What's the next? And we didn't right? wait until the debt was out the way to talk yeah. about it. So then we would just get excited about the possibilities. And so I think sometimes it's okay to let somebody th force you into that conversation. And that's the role that I have sat in as a financial coach. Um, Sometimes it's reading a good book. Sometimes it's watching. There's plenty. There's plenty of documentaries out there now that are helping <laughs> yeah. people with their finances and and thinking about things differently, as well as just, you know, showing up at conferences. And um, yeah. not everybody who comes to FinCon is completely out of debt, right? Like yeah. I would I would say that <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of people who are in the middle of their journey, right? So, you know, find what works for you. But I think for us being thrust into having to start that journey worked. It worked for us. So the one thing I want to come back to is how you started that journey, right? It took you five years. Yeah. So back to instant gratification. A lot of people see these social media posts. I got out of debt. And I, I think the problem what we have right now is everyone thinks that it's supposed to be just like that every single time that it happens. And it's like, no, it's, it's not like that. It's blood, sweat, and tears. And this is why you have to appreciate the journey. And what I often tell people is you have to learn that 
while you're on the journey, you have to appreciate everything that is going on during that journey. Yeah. Because the end goal isn't what this is about. This is about the learning experience. And then you have to circle back and that has to get fulfilled. So like yeah. what you're doing now is being a coach, you learned all of those painful experiences is bottled up now and you're the package. You're like, <laughs> listen, I've already been through it. I've seen both sides of this coin now. It took a while. It took me 60 months. It doesn't have to take you that long. But it doesn't yeah. matter how long it will take you. You have to take the steps and approach it. Yeah. You said you were doing like a thousand dollars a month. A lot of people will look at that like, whoa. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Look, there was one point in time when I got out of debt and it took me the same amount of energy. It took mm -hmm. me like a thousand, you know, twelve hundred dollars a month to get it. And you ask, well, how did I get it? We had to get another job. Yeah. Yeah, y'all got to put in work. If you really want to get this, this is going to take extra income. Mm -hmm. You're not going to sit back on the one job and think yep. it's going to be all good. Like, yeah, sure, you might be able to devise a plan. I'm not going to knock it. But the hustler. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you 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 got to put it in. If you want to get out, you want to make it fast, then you got to really put in that work. Yeah, so, and, that, and that's not easy. No. Uh, my husband did have a second job when we were looking to get out of debt and trying to figure all of that out. And, and to be clear, that $1,200 a month that we were paying, that, that's minimum payments. We had student loans, we had credit mm. cards, and we Talk had car it. payments. <laughs> yeah. So that's just minimum. That's just yeah. making sure that I don't have any any slow pays, Stars, late pays yes. on my credit, <laughs> right? And so we had to find ways to double that. And and really it was when it was bonus season or tax season, or, you know, that's when we were really able to accelerate and go faster. That's, this is actually why it took us five years is because, you know, the minimums were so much. We had little kids in, in childcare. Yeah. There were all of the competing priorities for our money. And it wasn't like we were out here, you know, living the life, you know, right. we, from the beginning of our marital relationship, we were on this journey. And so I think that it it's, we had to do extra in order to have the extra to put towards it, to make it happen faster. Cause you know, those student loans, minimally, they want you to take 10 years, 10 years. Ten. Right. And so they even got 20 um, out there and that they, right, they, they do that. The right. And now. so <laughs> we, we were insistent that that wouldn't be our story. And so, and that was the biggest one. And I think, that it just takes a lot of determination and it also takes, you know, you being willing to get outside yourself to, to get the results that you really want to see. That's it for this half of this podcast. What have you done with your spouse in order to discuss finances? Let me know. Tag the show and stick around for part two. See you next week. I got my click ready to use the money they got from jobs and courage and teaching them that it's not so hard. I'm doing this, making investing pop. You law is extra. You tuning in to Stocks and Bars. Stocks and Bars. Stocks and Bars. Stocks and Bars.